In today's lesson, you will begin to practice graphing more complex rational functions. At the end of the lesson, in addition to analyzing and graphing these functions, you will define domain and symmetry, identify intercepts and potential holes in the graph, as well as calculate vertical and horizontal or oblique asymptotes. You'll notice by these graphs that our rational functions are definitely more complex. In addition to having now three legs on some of them, we may even have these oblique asymptotes. They're all very different, but as long as we follow certain steps, you should be successful at graphing these. Let's start off with looking at rules for finding horizontal asymptotes. As you've noticed, our functions no longer have a constant in the numerator. We now have an x in the numerator. Anytime you have an x in the numerator and the denominator, we have a more complex rational function. And these three rules will apply for finding our horizontal asymptote. We will no longer look at the number to the right of the rational function and use that as our horizontal asymptote. There's three rules. The first rule is if the exponent in the numerator is less than the exponent in the denominator, as in this example here, x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. In that case, we call that bottom heavy, and our asymptote will always be y equals 0. And that's because our numerator cannot divide into the numerator, or sorry, our denominator cannot divide into the numerator, and therefore we have y equals 0. In our second example, we have the exponents being the same. In other words, we have a same heavy problem. In this case, our denominator can divide into our numerator, but all we need to do is divide the coefficients. So, in this example here, we would divide 2 by 4 and we would find that our horizontal asymptote is just y equals 1 half. In our third example, we're top heavy. Our coefficient in our numerator is greater than our coefficient in our denominator, as in this example. When that happens, you need to divide the polynomials, the complete polynomials. And I'll show you a more, exam a more complex example coming up. So we would take x squared divided by x, x goes into x squared x times, we subtract x squared and we have a remainder of zero. Many times you're going to have a remainder of something else, but again, too small and immaterial to make a difference, so our oblique asymptote will be y equals x, which you know has a y-intercept of zero and a slope of up one over one. So you would graph that just as you would graph any linear function. Let's now look at some steps. If you follow these steps to graphing a rational function, you'll be successful. Some of these steps may not always apply, but if you just run through this list in your head, you should be very successful at graphing rational functions. Let's go over the steps. And these steps in this page is listed, you'll notice when you open up your lesson page for this rational functions number two in Schoology. Step one, you're just going to factor, and remember, you find the domain immediately after you factor, before you simplify. If you happen to simplify first, you will miss finding part of the numbers that are excluded from your domain. So then step two, you'll simplify. Step three, that's where you identify your x and y intercepts. And we do that for a couple reasons. The first reason is just to help us get more points on our graph, and the second reason will be to help us identify any asymptote intersections down here in step six. Step four, we test for symmetry. The reason we test for symmetry is because that helps us to, again, visualize our graph and better graph it. Step five, this is where we identify all of our asymptotes, whether we have a vertical or a horizontal or oblique asymptote. And then step six, we will now identify those asymptote intersections or potentially holes. Let's look back here. Notice that this middle leg here intersects our oblique asymptote. That is an asymptote intersection. And by finding the, in, the um, x or y intercept, we are able to identify that. Sometimes there's also a hole. And if you'll notice down here, a hole will only occur, though, when we do have a difference between our domain and our vertical asymptote. So if we end up simplifying, we will end up having a hole. The other thing to note is that intersections can only occur on the horizontal asymptote. If we had an intersection on the vertical asymptote, we would have an undefined function. Because remember, a function is defined as only one output for each input. These steps are very important. 
So whether you write them down now or you write them down from the lesson page, it doesn't matter, but just make sure that you write those down. Let's go ahead and practice with finding horizontal asymptotes, since this is a little different than what we just finished doing in the previous lesson. So let's start off with the first one. Notice that we are same heavy, and when we're same heavy, we always divide. But what we divide are just the coefficients. So when we divide 4 by 2, we get a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. In our second example, we are also same heavy. This time our coefficients are 1 and 1. Dividing those, we get a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. For our third problem, now we're bottom heavy. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you look back at our rules, you'll notice that that means that y equals 0. That's our first rule. If we're bottom heavy, the denominator cannot divide into the numerator, so we're y equals 0. Let's closely examine this bottom one. In this case, we're top heavy, so now we have to divide. Let's go ahead and do this together. What we need to do is divide the polynomial in the denominator into the polynomial in the numerator until we get a linear function. We don't need to worry about the denominator. Now notice here we don't have any values for x squared or x because we go directly to 2. In order to help us divide, we would want to put in some placeholders. So we would have 0x squared plus 0x and then have the plus 2 on the end. This will make our division more organized and logical. How many times does our x squared then go into our 3x cubed? And that would be 3x times. Once we have that, we take the 3x and we multiply it by each of these terms, just like you would any long division. So 3x times x squared is 3x cubed. 3x times negative x is negative 3x squared, and 3x times negative 7 is negative 21x. And now, same as long division, nothing is different, I'm going to subtract these from each other. 3x squared minus 3x squared cancels. 0x squared minus a negative gives me a positive 3x squared. 0 minus a negative gives me a positive 21x, and then I can just bring down the 2. How many times does x squared go into 3x squared? And that would be a positive 3 times. Now you'll notice I now have a linear function. And so this is going to be my oblique asymptote. It's going to be y equals 3x plus 3. So on my graph, I would go up to 3, plot that point, and then my slope is going to be up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. I could continue this problem and get my remainder, but I don't need it because my remainder will be too small to make any difference. So there are some examples of how to find the horizontal asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes we find just as we have always been finding, taking our denominator, setting it equal to zero, and defining our vertical asymptotes. We're going to spend the rest of the time going over a couple problems on graphing, and we'll follow each of the steps so that you can see how they work. So our first step then is to factor this. Well, my numerator does not factor, so we would leave that the same. The denominator initially factors into, we have a difference of squares, so x squared minus 1 and x squared plus 1. Hopefully you can see that our denominator can continue to factor. The x squared minus 1 is also a different of squares, so let's go ahead and factor that. Once we're completely factored, now we'll find the domain. Well, it looks like our first example, 1, cannot be in the domain. That would cause our denominator to equal 0. And then negative 1 can also not be in the domain. x squared plus 1 is not a problem because that gives us an imaginary number, and so that's not real. So our domain, if we write it in interval notation, goes from negative infinity to negative 1, then on the other side of negative 1 to positive 1, and then from positive 1 to positive infinity. All right, step 2 is simplify, but there's nothing to simplify, so we can skip that. Step 3 is find the x and y-intercepts. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find our x-intercepts. 
in order to find the x-intercept, we would need to put y as 0 and solve. So in this case, we would end up with 0 equals x squared plus 4. And I'm just using our original function for ease of writing. But it doesn't matter if you use the factored form or the original form. Well, in order to solve for x, we would need to multiply both sides by x to the fourth minus 1, which causes that to cancel out because 0 times that is 0. And we would be left with 0 equals x squared plus 4. And if we solve, we get negative 4 equals x squared. Taking the square root of both sides means we have plus or minus a complex number. So we do not have an x-intercept. Let's go ahead and examine our y-intercepts. In order to find our y-intercepts, we would set our x's equal to 0. So if these are both zeros, then we would end up with 4 divided by negative 1. So our y-intercept would be 0, negative 4. We need to remember that point because we're going to graph it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Let's test for symmetry so that we can visualize what this might look like. See if there's any symmetry. Well, remember, we're going to plug in a negative x in for x. And if we do, our numerator doesn't change because negative x times negative x will still give us x squared. And same thing with our denominator. We have an even exponent, so it won't change either. Therefore, we know that we have symmetry now about the y-axis. So that helps us to visualize what our graph may look like. Now let's go ahead and do the next step. Let's find our asymptotes. Well, since we are bottom heavy, we know that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And we're going to have a vertical asymptote of x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Our last step now before we graph was to also visualize in our head if we have any holes or any intersections of our asymptotes. Well, here's our only intersection point at 0, negative 4, but our horizontal asymptote goes through 0. So we do not have any intersections of our asymptotes. Nothing was simplified in here, so we don't have any holes. Now we're ready to plot some points and graph our function. When we graph the function, it's very important to go ahead and plot our asymptotes first since that will be a guideline to help us draw our end behavior. So we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and then we had two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals 1, and then a second one at x equals negative 1. After graphing our asymptotes, then we're going to graph the point that we found from our y-intercept, and that was at 0, negative 4. So I've graphed that down here. And then notice I've selected some points just to the left of this line, negative 3 and negative 4. And now I'm going to select some points in the middle here to see what's going on. So it looks like I'm going to have to select a negative 0.5 and probably a positive 0.5. And then I want to select a couple points to the right, so I would select, on this case, a 2 and a 3. And actually up here, I would want a negative 2 and a negative 3, probably over a negative 3 and a negative 4. That way I'll be in much closer. Now all I need to do is take these points, plug them into my function. I can plug them into the initial function or into the factored function, whichever is easier and come up with what's my y points. I've now come up with my points, and you can see that some of these are fractions. I can convert them to decimals, or I can just do a rough estimate. 8 fifteenths is about 1 half. 13 over 80 is, I know, going to be very tiny. So now I've plotted my points. And I can see that here, I have these two points. This is getting smaller, so this end's going to follow this asymptote, and this end's going to follow this asymptote. Since I know that I am symmetric about the y-axis, the right side should look exactly the same. And then for the bottom, both of these points here, negative 4.5, negative 4.5, means that this function will look like a upside-down quadratic. And again, symmetric about the axes. Now I know that 
my end behavior will follow these asymptotes. It won't cross it or intersect it because I didn't have any holes or intersections of my asymptotes. All right, and that's one. Let's go ahead and try another one. So start with step one. We need to factor. If you like, you could pause this video and try to graph this one on your own and then come back and see how you did. So the new denominator factors into x plus 4, x minus 3. From here, step 2, we want to find our domain. So we know that our domain is going to be all numbers except for negative 4, so x cannot be negative 4 or positive 3, and now I've written that in algebraic notation. Now, step three is we need to simplify. So in this case, x minus three can simplify with x minus three. Now I know that I'm going to have a whole because I did simplify. So let's move on to our next step. Now it's going to be very important to make sure you simplify before you find your intercepts or they won't be correct. So let's look at our x-intercepts. If we take one, over x plus 4 and set it equal to 0, we would not have any x-intercepts, so that's Na. To find our y-intercepts, remember that we are going to take and set the x as equal to 0, so we would have 1 over 0 plus 4, which is just 1 fourth or 0.25. So we do have a y-intercept at 0.25. The next step is to see if we have any symmetry, and we can see that because we have odd and even exponents, we will not have any symmetry. Looking at our asymptotes, we're bottom heavy, so we have one at y equals zero, and for our vertical asymptotes, again, making sure to look at our simplified version, we would only have one at negative four. And that tells me right now that we are going to have an asymptote here, or not an asymptote, sorry, a hole at 3. So I went ahead and wrote that in. I'm going to have a hole at x equals 3, wherever that is in my graph. I won't have any asymptote intersections since the only intercept, intersection, or intercept, I should say, is at 0, comma, 0.25, and... I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so that won't intersect. I'm ready to graph, pick some points, and graph. So again, I pick some points that are just to the left of this intersection and just to the right. So I picked negative 5, negative 6, and I plugged it into my simplified version. Because I had to simplify, I want to use this version to plug in my values. And you can see that makes it a lot easier because negative 5 plus 4 is just negative 1, and 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and plot all these points, and I can get a very good idea of what my graph looks like by just plotting a couple points in each area. So again, because I do not cross any of these lines, I know my end behavior will follow these lines, but what about this hole, this hole where x equals 3? So what I'm going to do is go to where x equals 3, and I'm going to have a hole there. So my graph will actually not have a value right there. So instead, when I draw my graph, and this is a very small graph, so hard to tell, I'm going to have a gap there, and then my end behavior will continue on. Down here, there's not a problem. My end behavior will just follow these asymptotes. Now I wanted to show you graphically what this would look like on your calculator. Here's the graph of this function, and you can see that when x is 3, it's undefined. But notice that here on our graph, right here, we are not able to see that unless you click on it and then it says 3 is undefined. It doesn't actually graph a hole there on your calculator, so it's very difficult to find holes by just graphing that on your calculator. You actually have to think about it logically and go through the steps in order to locate your holes or even the intersections of asymptotes.
And that concludes our lesson today on graphing complex rational functions. So at this point now, you're able to analyze more complex rational functions. You can define their domain as well as test for symmetry, identify any intercepts as well as holes, and calculate vertical, horizontal, or oblique asymptotes.